Welcome everybody to the uh, not indie pod. That's what we. <laughs> I gotta change the branding at the top here to the business geeks podcast, which you can barely see. But if I put my hand over it, maybe you. Oh, there you go. I'll just keep my hand up here the whole time so you can see the logo in the top right hand corner of your screen. We are coming to you live here on Facebook Live on a new day and time. Uh, it's Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern. What what time is it in, and day is it in Australia? It's <laughs> tu- Tuesday at 10 a.m. Tuesday at 10 a.m. Sydney, Australia time. Is that Sydney, is it Sydney Australia time? Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> <sighs> All right, Sam from Samantha Riley Doc Global. How are you feeling tonight? I'm well. It's day for a start, so oh, I've got my geez. coffee. <laughs> Not <laughs> it. <laughs> no, doing oh, good. I'll just go back doing to good. hold my hand up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, doing good down here. Good, good, good. Still in lockdown. Totally, totally. But the the curve has flattened. We've got hardly anyone getting sick down here so we're super super grateful um we're not going through anything like you guys are going through there thank goodness but our thoughts are with you and a lot of the europe that are going through some really tough times right now yeah yeah no i appreciate that i'm, ho- I'm glad glad to hear that you're all staying staying safe down there staying separated uh, I can I can tell you some stories from this weekend that I saw lots of barbecuing happening. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not not good, not a good look, not a good look in this time. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and we also have Jennifer Crawford from Sparent.co. How are we feeling tonight, Jennifer? Feeling good, Joe. Happy and and healthy, and very grateful for that. So. Good. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying the spring weather that I think that does a lot mm. to boost the mood. Did you got get out, out today? Yeah, I got out for a run this morning and uh, a little bit of a workout in my driveway. And yeah, felt good. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so I, I, I've been been well, uh, been really busy, like really, really, really busy uh, with so many different projects rolling at the same time uh, and getting to spend time with the, the family. It's been good. Uh, real, real positive. I'm, I'm very happy that my son actually asked for me now instead of just mommy, 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 <laughs> mommy, 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 mommy. Uh, so I, it's, it, I mean, I've seen him every day since March 9th and that is, uh, it's a bit of a blessing in this this crazy time. Um, mm. So I, I definitely am am appreciated appreciative of that. So this week we are talking growing your business using LinkedIn. Sam or Jen, who who wants to to spearhead this one? I would like to spearhead this with a confession. <laughs> okay. I am a, I'm terrible at LinkedIn. High I'm five. terrible. I'm terrible. <laughs> I, I'm trying so hard. Sam, I know this is like totally your wheelhouse. You're gonna be saving us this episode. I I I know some things about LinkedIn. I could maybe give some other people advice, but do I take it? Oh my gosh. And you and you know why? It's because it was sort of the social media platform that was a little late to the game. It's really come into its own the past couple of years. So I hadn't incorporated LinkedIn into my social media habits. And I'm not as comfortable. It doesn't feel um, like second nature, like it does, like Facebook does, because I just haven't been engaged with the platform long enough. So I still, it's still kind of like the uncle that you meet at a family reunion that you're supposed to love, <laughs> but you don't really know him very well, but you hug him anyway. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's kind of like, that's what I want to start off with, but I've I've got an, some interesting statistics to maybe start us off before we get to the good stuff. Um, the reason I need to embrace LinkedIn more than I have is because LinkedIn reports over 660 million users spread over 200 countries as of late November 2019. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, um, and oh, and in 2019, 90 million LinkedIn users were senior level influencers and 63 million were in decision making positions. So the, this is the, um, this is the networking event 
of your dreams all online. Um, these are the people that you want to get in touch with to grow your business, grow your network. These are the types of people that can help you do that if you know how to use LinkedIn properly. So that will be the, the launch of this discussion, my confession, and me trying to convince you that even though I'm not using it, maybe to the best advantage that I could be, um, it is an, a very important platform to be on if you have a small business. Well, I'm hoping by the end of today's episode, Jen, that I convince you enough to be on it more often. And you too, Joe, because exactly yes. like you just said, Jen, all the right people that are in the right positions are hanging on LinkedIn. It is the world's largest network online networking site. So imagine going into a networking event and having 900 million people there that are all there specifically to talk business. Um, two people. I don't know if you know this, two people join LinkedIn every single second. That's how popular wow. this is. Imagine being at a network event where every second two people walked in the door. <laughs> I can't the even. Fire the fire marshal's going to be the next <laughs> one. <laughs> well, we can't. Okay, so this is where we actually had this show scheduled in for a couple of months ago or at least six weeks ago when, you know, COVID-19 started to come up and we didn't think it was appropriate at that time to talk about it. But when we were talking about today's episode, I thought, you know what, today is the perfect time to talk about it because we're social distancing or as I prefer to say, physical distancing. So we should still be networking. You know, Jennifer, you had said like many, many times on this show how important it is to network. So just because we're all in our homes doesn't mean that we shouldn't be networking. Right now is the perfect time to meet new people, collaborate, you know, be uh, doing joint ventures, meeting new people, building relationships, all of those types of things. And LinkedIn is the perfect place or a perfect platform to do that. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I've got my, <laughs> I've got my blazer, blazer on. And all. I've got my, my blazer on. I'm ready for LinkedIn. So look at this, Joe. I said to Jennifer, I went, wow, you look fancy today. She said, I've got my blazer on because we're talking LinkedIn. And I was oh, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I've just turned up in the same old black top I that just I just want to be wear. accepted. I just want to be accepted <laughs> on LinkedIn. <laughs> Uncle LinkedIn is saying, Jennifer, you are more than welcome to join us. <laughs> if I took this blazer off, they'd be like, what is that ratty shirt? you're wearing get out of our get out of our plat of our platform <laughs> however it has changed have you guys noticed that in I the last six, what, probably last 12 months how much linkedin has changed so mm. i've been using linkedin since around uh, i joined around 2012 and to be honest had no idea how to use it like i used to get these people you know, I'd get these connection requests in my email inbox and I'd be thinking, I don't know who that is. I don't even know what to do with this. I would just go, oh, accept and run away because I didn't know what to do. But around 2014, I went to a conference and someone was talking about LinkedIn and how he used it. And I, I remember sitting there, it was only about an hour that he spoke for. And in that hour, my mind was blown. And I just thought, oh my goodness, I am not understood. I hadn't understood how to use it, what it was. And from then I started really diving deep. And from about 2014, 14, 2015, I started really diving deep, teaching about LinkedIn. And uh, and in the last 12 months, I've got gotten so excited because the platform has really changed. So back in, you know, 2014, we a lot of the work that was done on LinkedIn was done through connecting with people. But in the last 12 months, news feed views on LinkedIn have gone up 60%. So wow. the way that we're interacting with LinkedIn is now a lot, lot different. And it's a really great place to uh, really share our thought leadership and our expertise because me people are now using the newsfeed as well, which is really cool. Hmm. I love everything you said. I will say, <laughs> I will say though, I, I've, I've tried to post more frequently on LinkedIn, but I am definitely suffering from a lack of consistency. And then I also suffer from LinkedIn rejection in the sense that I've posted some things and they've gotten very little, little feedback, like 
not even like three likes. And then I'm like, I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I like, well, whatever, whatever I'm putting into the LinkedIn universe, it is being spit back out. So I need to rethink what I'm, what I'm doing here. And then I get a little uh, more hesitant the next time. So I don't know if other people experience that, but um, I don't, I don't feel such rejection on Facebook. Like no matter what I put on Facebook, I feel like I'm guaranteed at least five to 10 likes on the low end on a good day. And you day. don't even need to put on your blazer. <laughs> I don't even need to wear a blazer. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to fit into the LinkedIn crowd better. I, you know, I'm, I'm curious too, because like, so here's a, I'm going to share my screen real quick. If I, if I may. Uh, so here's a post that I did, right? Free virtual supervisor, blah, 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 five likes, and, but it's been seen 310 times apparently. So that's, I mean, that's pr still pretty, that's pretty incredible actually that, that only five people liked it. I mean, I don't know if there's a way to see how many people actually like clicked on it as far as, uh, like, cause maybe that's the reason that more people see it. I don't know, like maybe people are clicking on it. I'm not really sure, but like 310, like on, you share something on Facebook, you know, 310 people ain't seeing that if only five people like it. Mm. Yeah, we mm -hmm. do like, we do like those numbers. So that's, that's a little bit of a mystery. Mm. Yeah. Let's, should we dive in? Yeah, yeah, do, do you yeah. Wanna, yeah, be my guest. Yeah, so I've shared a, a document with you guys and I'm quite willing and happy, uh, more than happy to share it with our listeners, uh, but, I teach a framework called the Triple Threat Framework. Ooh. Now, how I came up with this is, I don't know if you guys even know, but I have a dance background. I'm actually a choreographer, I'm a dancer, and you know, in our world, a triple threat is someone that can dance, can sing, and can act. If you turn up at an audition and someone's a triple threat, you and you can't sing or you can't act, you are shaking in your boots. You know, like triple threats, we're talking Hugh Jackman. He's my favorite triple threat. Um, so, you know, th there's Justin quite a lot of like. Justin. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hello. These, these people, if you turned up at an interview with them at, a, at an audition with them, you know that you don't, you're not going to get a look in, right? So, uh, and LinkedIn is the same. It, there's three different areas. So the triple threat framework is the, phase one is all about your compelling profile. This is what you have on your profile. This is your headline. It's what you write. Um, phase two is your connection approach. So how you actually connect and interact with people. And phase three is your content strategy and how you show up in the newsfeed. Um, so just like a triple threat, if you've only got one or two pieces, you know, imagine it like a, a three-legged stool. If one of those pieces is missing, it falls over. So if you've got not a, you know, a, a profile that's not very compelling, it doesn't matter how much um, content you've got going out, you're unlikely to build the relationships and connect with people the same. And it, it works the whole way around. So you definitely need to make sure that you've got the profile, the connection strategy and the content strategy. Well, do you have any tips on how to make your profile stand out? Because I I see a lot of profiles and they all kind of run together. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think mm -hmm. that, you know, there are a couple templates for writing a good profile. Everybody uses them. And then all of a sudden it's just a sea of monotony. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you, how do you stand out? Like, I have like a funny profile picture and I have a kind of a funny headline. Um, I don't, I'm not saying it's it's not attracting me any business, I'm sure, but I'm like, but at least I'm funny, you know, <laughs> at least I'm, <laughs> at least I'm clever. That's really, <laughs> that's something that you've brought up that's really important. We do need to be ourselves. We need to make sure that our brand is exactly who we are so that if someone met us in person, that would be showing up in exactly the same way, not having your funny profile picture and then turning up and being, you know, very straight and boring and bland you know your profile picture Jen is exactly who you are in person it's it, I think it's absolutely perfect from a branding perspective so let's go back though let's start off with the headline yes. the headline uh let me tell you a, a bad headline saying um <laughs> xyz proprietary limited or xyz llc mm -hmm. this is not a good headline because we don't know what xyz company is um 
or something like entrepreneur. So what? This is not a good headline. And headline should be an outcome-driven headline for who it is that you serve and how you help them. So uh, that's outcome We can driven. take down my profile. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, she's making me feel nervous because like... I'm conscious about my profile. Oh, because... I'm not talking about anyone's profile. Oh, oh man! Like, unless you've got XYZ LLC, and then well, in, in I, which case it does say it does say you know co no, my... parent and oh my gosh, I I don't know how that ha happened like that because I I I thought I had like a different headline there. But... I can't even see the screen. I know you like, gotta you, you, mag you gotta magnify that, Joe. If you my can, God, I'm way too old for this. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, you, you got yeah. So I don't know why I don't know why that's like that, but it that's is. the best gets the best gig you've got right now. Yeah, it is yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Co-host at Business Geeks podcast. Well, right. it does sound <laughs> proud. Yeah, I mean, but what's weird? It's like I have a founder. You know, the business. Like, there's other things here, but I, it, for some reason, I guess it just took the newest thing that yeah. I added. Well, Link LinkedIn knows what's important. LinkedIn knows where you're going to make your big money. <laughs> I'd be I'd be more inclined to edit that, Joe. Even though yeah. I think that's a fabulous headline. Dare you, don't you touch it? Don't you dare touch it? It's, oh, it's totally getting changed. I don't uh, know what to write. I don't know what you want to. You want to write this while we're here? Like, uh, all right. That's no, no, no. Let's not write it while we're here. Okay. However, okay. So, so what we we want to do with our outcome driven headline is start off with who we help. So I work with or I help or whatever it is, and be very clear on your ideal client. Who is that ideal client that you serve? And then how do you help them? So, you know, I help, I can't remember the exact wording of mine, but it's something like I help experts. I can pull it up, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I help oh, yeah. experts to, let's see if I get it right, to develop and monetize their thought leadership and influence. Look at that. There we go. Oh, Wow. Um, so so it's, it, it clearly shows who it is that I help and how I help them. So it's all about who am I, who do I want to read this? So if I've got someone that comes to my profile and they're, uh, you know, and they help um, restaurant owners, they know that, that we're not a match. They just know straight away. Uh, the other thing I really like is some authority positioning pieces. If you're a professional speaker, if you're an author, I really like those kinds of things on there as well because we want people to be able to reach out to us if they've got an opportunity. So that's that's the outcome-driven headline. I like it. I think it's very impressive. I do have a question though. Yeah, so, ask away. Yeah, so so with me, I have a, a company called Sparent, but mm -hmm. I'm really not the face of Sparent. Like it's not mm -hmm. a personal brand. It's a it's a company. I have a co-founder. We have people that work with us. Um, so so the the statement there, um, I feel like it's I don't know how much I I should put into it. It's like I help. It's not really I help. It's you know Sparent. That's why it's I just say co-founder of Sparent. I don't really say how I help people. Is that wrong? I think but you are. Such, no, no, no. I think this is such an awesome question because this also could be asked by someone that is employed at an accounting firm with 50 other accountants. LinkedIn is your personal brand. It's your personal profile. So just because you are a co-founder, you're talking about yourself on this profile so so you don't need to say i help so i think i've got helping because i also have a team behind me so you know helping um entrepreneurs to blah 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 i i can't think of an outcome driven headline for you on the on the fly <laughs> yeah, but right. um but your your profile is your brand it's for you so a lot of times i um if i'm speaking to a a corporation or a big business i think I really try and get each person within that business to understand what is their unique um, take or how do they help the people the most, what's their zone of genius within the company, and then brand themselves as that. So then you've got all bases covered within a company. Does that make sense? Yes. It, it makes total sense. I, I need to go now because I need to go fix my <laughs> oh, I can pull not, it back up for you. No, no, I'm not going to move right here. I need, it's it's going to be me and a, a little bit of whiskey and my LinkedIn profile for about an hour. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but but actually, so let's talk about the um, the profile picture. So the outcome driven headline is the first thing that people see, but the profile picture is also really really important. And Jen, there is something that you are doing absolutely brilliantly that I don't even. I'm not sure if you know that you've done it or if you've done it on purpose. I definitely don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that your profile picture should be the same on every single social media platform. Oh, yeah, I did do that. Yeah, and that's exactly the same as your Facebook picture, yes. uh, your Facebook image, because people may not have met you in person. They want to be able to recognize across all the platforms that that is definitely you. So um, super awesome that you've used that same image across all of your platforms, Jen. So well done. Well, thank you, yes. Sam. I, I love it when I accidentally do something right. <laughs> no, I, I, and you know what? That's such an important thing. I, I complimented uh, at least one or two people for that very, very reason at when I was at PodFest because I knew what they looked like because they had the same photo from like two or three years that I've been following. Like I might never met them in person, but now I knew exactly what they looked like because it was right there. I mean, and with that said, I have a picture of my daughter on my Facebook right now, which is, it's a hilarious photo, but it probably needs to get changed back over. Yeah, not not so good on the branding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and Sam, there, there's one thing I know, t talking back to, you know, going back to like what you put in your, um, your profile there, is that LinkedIn is a search engine. And so those things mm -hmm. are also acting as keywords for people who are looking for your expertise or for your unique zone of genius, your skill set. So it is really important in terms of growing your business to really nail nail that, right? Yeah. Okay. Totally. There was I a thought. stat and I've <laughs> sat down without it and I feel terrible about this because I really should have sat down with a stat. But I know that Years and years ago, when I first started studying social media, there, there was a, a stat going around that said that most people make up their decision of what you're like or make, you know, their thoughts within seven seconds of seeing you. And then I'd seen a couple of years ago that it was now three seconds. There is a study that has come out that said that people make their decision on whether they think you are the person that they should be working with in less than 0.03 of a second. That's so fast. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's a, literally a blink of an eye. Exactly. So we could sit here and discuss whether we think that's a good thing or whether we think it's a bad thing or judge it or whatever, it's but a it's a fact, right? A so we should be putting up an image that is nice and clear, head and shoulders only, something that makes people want to connect with you, you know, something that's got a nice, you know, a, a friend, you know, whether it's a smile or something friendly, something that looks like you so that if you do take that connection online and have to meet them in a coffee shop that you know who you're going to go and meet. Uh, but, yeah, definitely having a really good professional photo for your, uh, for your profile picture. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Well, how, how professional important. is professional? Because like, I, so in my case, I have this photo, you know, in the, in the button down shirt, but like you almost never see me in a button down shirt. Well, these, yeah, right. <laughs> no. So, okay. So I personally would have the button down shirt yeah, because I think that that does look more professional. However, at the same time, it still needs to be branded for you. Um, you know, someone like Gary V, he's got an amazing brand that we all know his expertise. He can wear a T-shirt. No one cares. But he's already proven himself. You know, none of us, well, actually, how about I just speak for myself? I'm not as well known as Gary V. <laughs> well, no. no. <laughs> so I'm not about to go onto LinkedIn with just a picture of a T-shirt because I don't think it's, I, I, that's not the way I want to be perceived. Uh, see, Lou's got it. Judging a book by its cover. It's just, it's what people do. <laughs> we, we have no choice. We have exactly. to. We have yeah. to. So, I mean, you know, it's totally up to you, Joe. If you, whilst you are showing up in a t-shirt all the time, does your, what does, uh, what I'd be thinking about more is for the clients that you want to work with, are they likely to hire you if you're wearing a t-shirt? Again, I'm not judging, yeah. but <laughs> are they likely to hire you if you're wearing a t-shirt? 
I would keep the button down. However, I'm the same. I, well, I do not show up to business meetings with a salad on my head, but I'm, re I'm <laughs> rethinking that decision. I'm totally rethinking uh, They're it. not going to be able to find you in the coffee shop. Oh, this is you terrible. should definitely turn up with a salad on your head, Jen. I'm totally <laughs> going to do that. You, you guys think I won't. I totally will. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> I love putting food on my head. I love it. I love it. It's so much fun. Oh. So, yeah, the, the, that profile, it is, think of, look at it through your, your ideal client size and think about what, how they're potentially judging. I'm not judging. I don't care what you show up in. But if I've got a $10 million business and I have a belief that people that wear button-up down shirts are the ones that are more likely to help me, then, you know, like. And, and I might be okay with that, honestly. Because that's not that that's not necessarily the person that's gonna mesh the best with me, right? Yeah, yeah. And and that and I think that comes back to like, well, it goes back to like when I was you know filming the TV show and going back and forth. Do I wear a button down shirt or do I wear uh, you know my gray V necks? Like I I wear literally every day at the shop. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, it's it's a hard it's a hard call, but for me, it's 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 just who I am. Like I I mm. can't. I, it's I'm not gonna be somebody that I'm not, and you can hashtag that, Lou. <laughs> uh, but it's yeah, it's it's it is a hard call though because you don't like like you said you don't want to be turning people away. But here here like here's the thing, right? So salad on the head. My dad is probably not gonna hire you, Jen, because he's gonna look at that and be like, I'm not this 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 lady's crazy. Like yeah, putting salad of course, of salad. Course. But the fact that Mr. Pardo, is... I'm okay with that. I, <laughs> exactly. I totally respect that decision, Mr. Pardo. Exactly. Um, yeah, but hopefully, I mean, what I wanted to say is that I, you know, I, I'm an outside of the box thinker. I think creatively. I, you know, I'm just that kind. I've a little, a little bit of a creative, you know, a humorous uh, side to me. That's really what I want to project. I mean, it, it's not that I put that up there without any sort of thought. I am a business person through and through. Um, so, but I also know Joe, like in defense of your button down is that we all are different people. Like to, mm -hmm. we all, we all have different sides of us that compose the whole. And I think the business side of you that wants to attract high paying clientele, like if you were to show up with a bit to a business meeting with one of them, you would show up in a button down because that's the person that you are representing as your, mm -hmm. the, the business professional. Um, the person in the, the comfortable t-shirt um, is hanging out with his friends, hanging out with his family, but this isn't friends. It's not family. It's a totally different environment. So I think a different person shows up in that environment. In my opinion, you can argue mm. with me. No, no. I really like that you said that. And the only one thing that I'm going to pick up, and it was purely words, because I know this is not what you meant, Jen, mm -hmm. is that it's not a different person that's showing up. It's the same person, just same person. in a different light. Yeah. 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 Different, because different Different because layers. on Saturday I'm wearing yoga pants and a and a VT as well, but I would never turn up to speak on stage in that. Right. That doesn't mean I'm off brand. It just means that on Saturday that's what I wear. And you know, when I turn up to an event, I like to show up in a way that my ideal client knows that I'm the authority. I work with a lot of people that are in professional services, and I want them to take me seriously and listen to what I'm saying just because I turn up looking a certain way, not because they're thinking, what is she wearing and not listening to what's coming out of my mouth. Well, that's, you're right. I mean, and, and thinking about your clothes shouldn't be the first thing that people think about, you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't be an automatic, like, oh, wow, they're like in rags or they got a salad on their head. Like it shouldn't, <laughs> you don't want that to be the first thing and the lasting impression that goes throughout that. So mm. yeah, I, I think, I, I don't know. I think that, there is times where I, I mean, I, and I have worn a button down shirt for certain situations that I, you know, but d you know, day in and day out of operations, like I, I want to be ready to mobilize, right? I want to be able to, to get my hands dirty. I want to be able to get involved and not be like, Oh, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't need to be going to do dry, unnecessary dry cleaning, you know, uh, here. So <laughs> To, you know, to me, it's, <laughs> what's, what's, what's Leon saying? I've got saying? someone hanging over my balcony, washing the outside that oh. is like just seriously like looking straight in the window and it's quite off-putting. <laughs> I wish you could move your camera so we could see him. <laughs> well, I can if you like. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> oh, 
Oh. 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 <laughs> Are you sure that's not Spider-Man? Like, is he there to save you or save somebody? Oh, sorry. I was like fire. a little kid then. I couldn't focus. Right. I'm back with you. It's, it's okay. All right. <laughs> So I've been there. talked about that photo for way longer than I was thinking that we would talk about it. And there's one <laughs> other thing that I want to mention right, before we move on to phase two, and that's that your profile should not read like a resume. Your profile should read like how you can help your ideal client. So not this is who I am and this is what I've done and me and me and I and I. Not that at all is do you have these problems would you like them solved? This is how I can solve them. This is how I can back up that I've done it for other people. A Spider-Man side job. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, times are tough, you know. <laughs> when, when everybody's stuck inside, there ain't a whole lot of crime to uh, be going around. Yeah, Spider-Man's window washing now. This is, <laughs> this is what the pandemic has, has done. Oh, so funny. So, yeah, so, so really position that profile – um, to show how you can help other people. All right. Well, that alone is a lot of work and all very good advice. So, so now let's assume that our profile is on point, Sam. Absolutely. Okay. So now We're we ready need to, to rock make and roll. Yeah, now we need to network. We need to reach out to people. <gasps> so we need to reach out. We need to accept invitations. Now, this is where I know a lot of people get tripped up because they think, oh, I'm not going to accept that. I don't know who that person is or I, I don't want to go and ask that person to meet me. Imagine that LinkedIn was a real-life networking event. If someone came up to you and put out their hand and said, hey, you know, I'm Jen, I'm Joe," would you turn around and walk away? Or would you shake their hand and say, tell me more about you? Do they have is, a glass of wine? Well, actually, that is probably a really valid point. <laughs> yeah, all I'm saying is that if someone walked up to you in real life and introduced themselves, you wouldn't, I know that we wouldn't walk away. We would, we would, you know, shake their hand and, and open up a conversation. So do the same in LinkedIn. If you would do it in real life, do it on LinkedIn. Okay, but 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 like I could go through the amount of network connections that are coming through, and they're all like literally almost all saying the same thing. Like, hey, I saw, I noticed your profile, and you know, I thought, let's say, hey, hey, there, Joe, I saw that you did consulting businesses. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, hi, Joe. We're blah blah blah. I so hang on, can I can I put that looking. a different way, Joe? Okay. Let's pretend I'm walking up to you in an event. Hey, Joe, we haven't met before. I'm Sam. I, I've heard lots of people saying that you're a consultant. Tell me more about that. So that's great because I can talk to you, but is there a way? It doesn't look like I can message members outside of my direct. Oh, it's literally. So if they've sent you a I message, up. once you connect, you can send them a message. So I'm all for talking to people and networking with people, right? Like mm -hmm, I, I mm -hmm. accept Facebook messages and Twitter messages. Like, yeah, that's awesome. But like it, right now, because I guess because I'm not a paid member anymore, like I was like, I don't know. Oh, I shouldn't, it makes no difference whether you're paid or free. Well, according to this, it does. It says may, uh, message members outside of your network, your direct network like Justin. So you see down the side there, it's got their people that have reached out to you. So we're looking at your screen. For anyone that's listening on, on Apple Podcasts or in any of the other app apps, you to totally you subscribe won't, to. We, you won't be able to see this, but what we're looking at is Joe's screen where people have reached out. So they've sent you a message. So that top one, Melanie, if yes. you hit accept, right. look, she's now in your network and now you can re respond to her message. But my question is, is, is why do I want to accept it? Cause is it, cause it's different now than it was before? Is that the, is that the thing? Cause I, it used I, to be only, only accept people, you know. That's like someone walking That's... up to you that you've never met at a networking event and saying, I don't know you, get lost. I think, I think, uh, well, let me see if this is what you're trying to get at, Joe. So, because I get a lot of this, you know, in mail messages that turn me off and they're all obviously pre formatted. They're obviously just, it's just a, a copy and paste message that goes out to anybody that, you know, whatever hits a certain keyword or whatever that they're looking for. And so, and it's also obvious when they, when they inbox me that they, they want to sell me their services. It's like up front and center. And so I tend not to reply or connect with those people. Um, I very rarely get a message that is typed 
just for me, like personal, like that is that is clear that it's just like, hey, you know, hey, I'd, I'd love to connect with you, but you know, something authentic. It's always like these canned, you know, responses, like they're a little off, they don't quite fit, like they, you know, um, and so it comes across as spam. And that's what turns, there's so many of them that it's, it's just, it's a big turnoff. But See, maybe- I just think this is a, I think this is a perception that you've got into this mindset okay. because when I can mostly when I speak to people, I would say, hi, how are you? That's how I speak to everyone. Right. It's, it's a copy and paste. And I'm going to put that in air quotes because I say it to everyone. So I think that this is a perception. I think that when people, you know, they're saying this is what they do, how many people do we run into at a networking event that start off trying to sell you their services? It's exactly the same online. And I think that this is where, and and either do it or don't, I don't really mind, but I think that we need to just let those, those hard and fast beliefs go and just open up. I'll okay. give you an example. I had someone yesterday that reached out and they did have one of those spammy buy my thing connections. It was, you know, Sam, this I'm reaching out to consultants and because I help people find leads. Well, I don't want that person's, you know, but I still connected. Hi, that's great. You know, thanks for letting me know. And he said, look, you know, are, are you wanting leads right now? No, I, I'm good. And I'm working with other people and blah, blah, blah. And then I turned it back on him. And I said, look, by you by going out in a cold and in essentially cold calling to people like this, how much response do you get? Maybe you should start looking at through these three different prospects, you through your prospect size, and you'll get more people wanting to work with you. And we ended up having a really great conversation backwards and forwards, and we parted as friends. Well, I think that's a great. A great example, Sam. And I'm going to <laughs> this week. I, you've convinced me. Look at you, normally, two. you sit there with your arms crossed, like well, I'm not going on. No, I'm you. opening. I'm oh, opening no. my arms. I'm oh, I'm loosening up my blazer. <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm going to take your advice, Sam. And I'm going to for the, this whole week, I am going to reply to every single message I get on LinkedIn, and then I'm going to report back to you and I let you, and let you know to. what the experience was like. Because I don't love you too. I've got to be, I've got to be willing to reframe it and try it out. Because maybe I have just been a jerk. Maybe I've just, (laughs) you know, maybe I've just been a snob. I don't think you've been a jerk or a snob on purpose. I think that this is exactly what I used to think back when I first started on LinkedIn was who are you? Why would I want to connect with you? I don't know who you are. You know, you're trying to sell me something. But I have just connected with so many amazing people on LinkedIn. I've got clients from LinkedIn. I've got I've met joint venture partners on LinkedIn. I've met people and connected with them in real life from, you know, when they travel down to Australia from the other side of the world. I've got podcast interviews. I find guests. Like there's just so many different ways that I can we can use LinkedIn. All right. I'm I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. <laughs> and and I don't know about Joe. He's looking very much I, like I I'm, don't know about this. I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm considering it. I I don't know. I know I need to do a better job with LinkedIn in general. It's not on my homepage of apps on my phone. Like it's it's in my social media folder versus like Facebook and Instagram. Um which is probably not great, but I I don't I just I don't know. I will say, you know what, this, I, I just remembered this, that a couple of years ago, I did try replying to every message and that I thought, you know, the spammy ones, I just, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm going to reply. I'm going to call their bluff. I'm going to reply. And not one of them messaged me back. Wow. Now that was two years ago. Mm. I am willing to say that a lot can happen in two years. So I am going to try again. Thanks to Sam. <laughs> He's a big influence on my life. He tells me to do something, I will do it. I really, I really hope that you do, Jen, because oh, well. it's just such a fantastic platform. F- fantastic platform. So the third piece, and we need to really touch on this quickly because I know yes. that we need to move on to some oh, really gosh. cool. Wow. Yeah, I know. Is the content strategy, and I was talking before that newsfeed views are up sixty percent. So put it, making sure that you're posting content on LinkedIn 
uh, is really, really important to help position your authority. So that what we what I post on LinkedIn is not what I typically post all the time on Facebook. I don't share about what I do with my kids, not that I do it on Facebook anyway. Um, but, you know, it's not the more personal things. It's more if I'm sharing something personally, it's got a, a business metaphor or, you know, a business story wrapped around it. Because on LinkedIn, I'm really trying to position my authority, my expertise and help educate people why they would want to work with me. Mm. That makes a whole lot of sense when you say it, Sam. I'm also going to be posting more on LinkedIn. Well, let I, me know when you post so I can come and give you some LinkedIn love. Oh, please do. <laughs> it's a, you know, when you don't get any response, it's, it's very disheartening. Yeah. I'm going I'm to put some effort into it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some effort into it as well. Awesome. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to reply to every single one because a lot of them are seem to be trying to sell and use... You know, like the. But what are we afraid of, Joe? Experiment. Like, so what? Well, what if they do try to sell so to no, us? Like, we well, can just say no. I see. Yeah. I don't know. May, like again, maybe it's just that that frame of mind where it was like, oh, only accept connections Ooh. with people that you know. Right. That that's still stuck up in there. That I just like. I don't want to be connected to a whole bunch of people that don't like i'm not necessarily going to deal yeah but deal think about with. it this way like Joe. i don't mind having a conversation with them like but i yeah, but, but think like, about it this i need way. to upgrade my account yeah think about it this way okay joe i mean uh, sam's got me thinking in a whole new way already all right um, good. because business the, the business that you want is not going to come from the people you know it's going to uh -huh. come from the people outside of your inner circle Oh, I say oh something good? Jen right now. Did I say something good? You yeah. said something brilliant. <laughs> exactly. Hi, 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 five, hi, five, Jen. We need a sound yeah, well effect, done, Joe, Jen. for when I say something brilliant. You'll hardly ever have to use it, but I want it to be something special. <laughs> You said a sign or or a, no, a sound. I'm like a, a sound. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't. I got. I don't own a roadcaster or anything to like hit the buttons. But what? I know. I I know. That's going to be our point. first sponsorship. We yes, will. Yeah, absolutely. Have a so we can have absolutely. These, these. I need some sound effects. Yes. <laughs> you were a hundred percent spot on, Jen. You Thanks, were one hundred percent spot on. And I would also like to add. Do you really know everyone on your Facebook profile, Joe? No, no. As time has oh, gone on, I have. Oh, there we so... go, right there. <laughs> no, uh, but again, I, I, I thought we were supposed to treat LinkedIn differently than than Facebook. Um, oh, so you know you you don't have to talk to Facebook friends. Oh, I do, but, but it's... I, I do. I, I mean, I don't know every single one, but I do know probably close to. 85 to 90 percent of them oh well just use linkedin <laughs> to find some new friends joe <laughs> yes uh, yeah. yes and maybe someday we'll be able to live stream this right to linkedin because like they'll let us they'll let us in yeah. yes hopefully i, I would yeah. like that they've been they're being really picky you can apply oh, no. i did then, apply i applied like did? forever I, ago. I applied like 18 months ago i gave yeah. up halfway through the application <laughs> 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 i was like this is too hard linkedin i know someday you're gonna give it to everybody so i'll just wait for that day i don't have time for your application <laughs> uh, <laughs> Joe Fumble. Uh, look guys i hope i hope i hope that you do give linkedin a try because yes. it is such a fabulous platform and because people are there to do business, people are there in executive and C-suite positions, they are there to connect and network, there is a lot of opportunity to meet the right people. I, don't, I, go, don't go no. into it thinking you want to sell to people and you'll do really well on it. And I know my dad swears by it. He uh, is he's only connected with parts and trucking industry people in his circle and uh it, he he absolutely swears by it. We should have had Dominic on the podcast. Yeah, right. That, that would totally. be first. Well, my son's upstairs. Dom His name's Dominic. Well, Dominic Senior. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it, he, he, you know, he would be. He, he he like I said, he sings the praises of this uh, of LinkedIn for sure. Oh, I'd like to hear him sing too. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think a lot of people would. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Moving All right, on. absolutely. Thank you, Lou. <laughs> uh all right so uh we have a couple of articles that we can talk about it was there, uh what we got the the new york post one uh i could share that throw that up here yeah 
I, I, I wanted this one on today's uh, episode because I thought it showed a brilliant piece of marketing during this coronavirus time that we're going through. So this article is about West Elm. West Elm offered free virtual, or they're offering free virtual backdrops for your Zoom or other video conferencing calls. And these pictures are just beautiful West Elm rooms. So your, your Zoom background will look like you're in a nice, you know, penthouse or a loft. Um, and it's brilliant because one, they were solving a current need. We're on video more than ever because of the coronavirus. And so, and a lot of us don't have offices set up and we don't want to, you know, show off our dirty laundry or unmade bed in the background. So we need something like, like a beautiful room to fill in. Um, so they saw that need, they answered it, but then they also got a tremendous um, uh, way, new way to market their furniture. Mm. So they opened up a brand new distribution channel for uh, to showcase their furniture. It looks good. It's in people's homes. People are talking about it. I mean, people's fancy virtual backgrounds are always the topic of any video call these days. Um, so I thought it was a brilliant move. And I thought it was a good example of marketing during a sensitive time. So mm. I know a lot of businesses are wondering how to market right now during the pandemic. They don't want to be tone deaf. They don't want to be insensitive. But I thought this was a, a brilliant a brilliant move on West Elm's part. Mm. This so uh, so clever, so clever. Yeah, yeah, I just I just wanted to give them credit. I actually downloaded several of their backgrounds, but my computer is old enough that it really doesn't want to work with me on them. But <laughs> but they are so pretty. I loved them. Mm. Love it. So okay. uh, let's see. And the uh, what do we also have the the. Uh... The Fanny DeVito. To explain, explain this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sam doesn't like it. I already know. This is, I, I, just, I already know she doesn't like it. It's the Fanny DeVito and it is a fanny pack with Danny DeVito's face on it. it even has tufts of his, of his hair. Um, and <laughs> I'm putting this in the coolish or foolish question mark segment. Um, you know, Danny DeVito is a, 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 a he's part of our pop, popular culture. He's been part of it for decades. Um, he's been in a variety of shows that, you know, we've all loved. He's a character, a lovable curmudgeon-y character. And <laughs> I know we're, we're, for those of you listening to the audio version, we're looking at Danny DeVito's face right now, which is always <laughs> just his face is funny. Anyway, the, the, the Danny pack i think is kind of clever um <laughs> the fanny devito the fanny devito because it's a fanny pack fanny packs in in themselves are a little um questionable in terms of fashion and then you put danny devito's face on it and all of a sudden it's a fashion statement i say it's cool ish <laughs> i i i think it's pretty cool i would uh, i would okay. wear it around town with a salad on my head <laughs> You two would, are on your own on that one. I would totally put my I would totally I mean, I put my snacks in there. <laughs> <laughs> I would eat out of Danny DeVito's face. Oh. Yeah. At least one of us would. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Cool it. I I say coolish. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it is. It is. It is. I think. I think it's cool. I, I like it. I, I love Danny DeVito. I think he's fantastic. I'm not going to wear a Fanny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about a Fanny Pack? I think Fanny Packs are the most practical form of outerwear. So I just need to say right here that Fanny in Australia has a very different meaning to what it does in America, and even saying <laughs> it makes me sweat and what makes my mean? hands go sweaty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Luke, I'm actually going to tell you down. offline what okay. it means in Australia. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, looking forward to that. <laughs> I love a fanny. I wish fanny packs were more fashionable because I love them. They're so. Go to Disney World. Everybody's wearing them. Oh, well. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, who's got to grind my gears? Uh, I have a little, a minor one. 
share one. So, that's, that's, that's all we've so, got. So, <laughs> so, so, oh wow, Jen, I'm surprised. Uh, so, <laughs> le- well, I think this was last week. I was because I had a couple of them uh, from, I guess, from last last week or the week before. Anyway, I was listening to the radio. I, was, I think I drove somewhere and uh, a commercial came on the radio talking about uh it there's this place called the pub it's here in south jersey it's like the original pub it has it's a buff- they have like the buffet salad and uh it's like a meat and potatoes kind of place it's 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 cool like i've been there a bunch of times uh been around forever but they ran a commercial and this was like last week i, th- I think it was last week uh for their easter special <laughs> and how you should come in and enjoy their salad bar and how you should enjoy it like yeah and i'm like didn't no, like why did nobody kill that co- you know commercial and run a different commercial like why are you promoting something and i've driven past it i think uh once or twice since this all has gone down and it's totally empty there there's not a they're not even like doing takeout like every place else apparently so instead of running a a different commercial or running no commercial they ran a commercial for something that they legally cannot do i wonder if they just forgotten that it was scheduled that's a lot i'm sure it's not cheap (laughs) so that's really a shame so that's why it grinds my gears is because you know it's a small local business um they they were mentioned i think on uh on the steve harvey show at one point too uh because they had like a big poster board thing like right when you walk in to, to talk about being on the steve harvey show but yeah it just it just grinds my gears because like ah, oh, it's wasted money it's wasted opportunity they could yeah. per- change the change the, the the text right change what you're saying mm, change mm-hmm. the messaging mm. I'm, so I'm that so it mad. makes it yeah like it, it's it, you know as a as me as a joe pardo it is very frustrating oh to my hear. gosh no i'm so sorry okay yeah. I, I, I have a grind my gears but Go now ahead. i just i forgot it but now you've remembered it, right? No, I just no. I just forgot it when I was responding to Joe and trying to, you know, get mad with him. <laughs> it was a good one, too. I know it was a good oh. one. I know it was a good one. And I'm going to be so mad because I'm going to remember it as soon as, we, as soon as we hang up. Oh, you have to put it straight into the spreadsheet so that yeah. it's all ready for next week. What was it related to? I don't even know. I was uh. like, it's totally gone. Can I can I do a reverse grind my gears then off the back of what Joe was yeah. talking about? You know, yeah, I don't ahead. do grind my gears very well, do I? But in Australia, I don't know. Do you guys do like a four day holiday over Easter? Is that what you normally do in the US? Okay, so we in no. Australia we have a four day holiday, wow. and so it's it's we love Easter in Australia because <laughs> you know that's the time that we all go away. Everyone goes away for Easter camping, you know, going away with friends. So it's a big time for people to be selling camping gear, caravans, all of that kind of thing. And a lot of people, exactly like Joe said, have been putting out their advertising in exactly the same way. And I've been thinking the same thing. That is such a waste that they're still running the advertising. Then yesterday, um, one of the companies that sells camping gear and tents and all of that kind of thing have just put together a promotion where you put your tent up in the backyard for Easter and you take pictures of it and you enter a competition. And I just thought that that was a really cool take to still, A, to still be able to sell your camping gear, you know, for the busiest weekend of the year and, B, to get people involved. I just thought it was super, super cool how they they pivoted that message or I actually don't like the word pivot. I spoke about that on Facebook today, mm-hmm. but realigned their message so that it was applicable and relatable to their market. And and so big shout out to Anaconda here in Australia. They did a it. great oh, job. That's of that. awesome. I remembered my grind my gears. Yay! Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm sure a lot of people are doing this in their uh, at home downtime. I have been unsubscribing from a bunch of, you know, email lists and stuff that I've gotten on. I was just, you know, trying to clean up my inbox, you know, know, doing some housekeeping. This is what I hate. (coughs) When you unsubscribe from an email list and they send you an email to confirm that you've been unsubscribed, I thought I was going to lose it. (laughs) This is, I've never even seen that before. (laughs) It happened to me twice. I probably unsubscribed from like 10 lists. 20% 20% of those lists emailed me to confirm that I unsubscribed from their email. And I thought I was going insane. 
Who does? Why would that be? Why? Well, what about what? the ones that say, well, it takes about 10 days for us to remove you from our list. I haven't. And they continue that. to send you emails in the meantime. I haven't had that. I have had that. You have to unsubscribe from all their lists. Like they have 25 oh, different yeah, lists yeah. and you think you've unsubscribed, but you only unsubscribe from one of the 25. That's tricky. That's very tricky. Um, mm. But yeah, don't send me an email when I unsubscribe from your email list. <laughs> that's how bad i get that's clearly clearly <laughs> wow i have no Lou, words. Lou agrees with me finally oh thank you <laughs> Lou. <laughs> he didn't like the the fanny devito but he agrees with me on that yay <laughs> oh john piper's joining us from denton texas a little yes. late, John, but that's okay. We'll take you when we can get you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, we have a new time now for anyone who's just you know joining, jumping in. Uh, Mondays at eight a a a a a a m eight p m Eastern Something. Standard Time, and te- uh, um, Tuesdays ten a m ten a m Australian Eastern, Eastern Time. Eastern standard yep. Time. Yep. Standard Time. Sta- oh, daylight to time. Keep up with Isn't it daylight no, no, no. Time? Standard oh, you- Time because we've just come off daylight oh, time. We're heading into okay. winter. Which is so? I was going to ask: Is is Easter your Labor Day? Uh, no, we have Labor Day too. Hey, we're in oh, Australia. Yeah. We take all the holidays, man. <laughs> <laughs> we have Clearly. all the holidays. <laughs> I'm going down under. Yeah, well, I was planning on it this year, but uh, not oh, anymore. Oh, not anymore. So sad. So it sad. It is. It well, is. we're right up at the hour, guys. Yes, so it's we need been to wrap fun. this up. It has been fun. Thank you all so much for watching. You should totally follow us on facebookcom Geeks podcast. You should go to our newly revenue innovative website i don't think we told you jen but uh me and leon worked it out uh you can go to uh businessgeekspodcast.com you can also f- uh follow us on subscribe to us on uh on youtube we're there it's a little hard to find us but if you go to businessgeekspodcast.com <laughs> Uh, yeah, scroll down, click on uh, watch on YouTube, like right under, like right above the subscribe buttons. There, we have subscribe buttons now on the on the on the front home page. Uh, Sam well. had to grind my gears, Jen, and said to the guys, "This is not good enough." <laughs> yes, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> is that why? Is that why Leon jumped in? Jumped in? Uh-huh, because like, I had a stalker went. This is not good enough, guys. Do something no. with it, and they did. In all fairness, they did, and I'm much happier. I much can't happier. wait to look happy. at it. We, we need some more images and things to go to go together, and we need a group photo when we actually can get together. When we can actually travel, it was yes. going to be this year. Well, we had, you know, yeah, that's true. Anyways, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, go check out businessgeekspodcast.com. Uh, we'll be back next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 10 Tuesday. T- uh, yeah. But, uh, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Time. Go check us out, uh, and we'll have our next uh, next episode then. Hope you all have a great, safe week. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Please come back, Don Piper. Okay. Is it? Oh, there it goes.